On November 16, 2020, Cirque du Soleil's show Zumanity at the New York, New York closed forever. No more performances. But this wasn't a C-19 related casualty. This was something that was probably more than five years in the making. In this video, we're going to talk about the missteps of the entertainment giant Cirque du Soleil, what shows may be closing in Vegas in the future, in my opinion, based on my analysis, and tell you about your future in watching a Cirque production. This is a twisted tale. Try to stay with me. I I actually did research and I have real notes right here and I will hope to be able to enlighten you as to what is really going on with this giant international entertainment powerhouse. Hello out there my friends on YouTube. My name is Steven and I am not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger and I hope you would like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the future notifications. This is a very interesting video that I've been trying to make a several times this week. I haven't been able to get it just right. Today is Sunday fun day. It felt like it could be a good day to make it. So I hope you enjoy the ride. It's definitely a convoluted story and you would not believe the management missteps that in my opinion Cirque du Soleil has made to get them to this point. If at any point in this video you you like this kind of stuff because you're into the entertainment industry or you like Las Vegas or you just uh, like a, analysis of different kinds of things, uh, make sure you do like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the future notifications. I do videos all the time. That would help the channel. It would cost you nothing. And leave us a comment below. If you've seen a Cirque show, what was the first one you've seen? That's generally the ones that you love the most in life. It kind of like your first unrequited love. You know, you just always remember that one. And if you've never seen a Cirque show, why not? You're just not into it. Some pretty cool Cirque productions out there, but what will remain, we'll talk about it that in this video. If you guys also want to support the channel, we have YouTube channel memberships, Patreon. I'm almost finished my Plaza video. You'll get early access to that when it's done. It's actually a two-part video. You're really going to like it. It's going to be about 15 minutes long, I think, at the end of it all. Lots of cool Fremont Street footage, the Plaza room review. Uh, that'll be early sneak peek on both those platforms. Then you get to see it here on YouTube early, of course, naming the credits and all that. And also VegasFaceMask.com. I am Matchy Matchy from my hometown in Calgary, Alberta, Canada to my Christmas mask, two for 25, Black Friday special. Uh, order any order and get a free one. And that means I can give away all my sports ones for free. You can't sell that sports stuff. That's against the rules. But I can give you a free gift when you order any order. And uh, we also have 60 other designs you can get for free. All right, so Cirque du Soleil. It's a giant, huge, mega powerful entertainment entity, right? The history of Cirque du Soleil is so interesting. I mean, uh, Steve Wynn had a circus tent in the back of the Mirage in the parking lot, which is how Cirque would perform most of their shows back in the 80s. There was no residencies anywhere. Guy Libertair brought the show to town, performed at the Mirage, which Wynn owned at the time. Wynn was so impressed that he offered them a custom-built theater at the Mirage or the Treasure Island next to the Mirage, said, hey, we're building this cool resort. You might like it. Let's build you a theater and get you in there so it just be you. You can build it to your specs. Mystir was born. Um, people started saying, Siegfried and Roy, who? I want to see Cirque du Soleil in Vegas. And that show went on to spawn multiple shows over the course of Las Vegas' history. Flash forward, though, what, 1990-something until 2000, almost 30 years, and we have the closure of Zumanity. This shouldn't come as a shock. Now, this is not the first show that's ever closed in Las Vegas with a Cirque brand on it. We, of course, had most recently run by Cirque du Soleil at Luxor. That was an ill-fated show by Cirque du Soleil's new subsidiary because they started spinning off things at Cirque. They said, we want to do more traditional theater productions. Didn't pan out at the Luxor, but you also had Zarkana over at the Aria as well as uh, Viva Elvis at the Aria as well. Ironically enough, those theater district, this theater section at the Aria now being used as a convention space, so I guess it's not being used at all for anything. Well, the problem for Cirque du Soleil stemmed, and we'll get to why Zumanity actually closed in just a few minutes here. Uh, the reason that Cirque du Soleil is in so much trouble, the reason for Zumanity's ultimate closure, and what I think will happen, you will see more shows in Las Vegas close, and we will also in this video stay tuned with it, Tell you the shows that will not close. It's important to note that. I think there's a, several that will stay. Um, it stems back to 2015. 2015. That is when Cirque du Soleil sold a 90% share in their company to several different organizations. The first being TPG Capital, a giant company that was responsible for uh, a lot of people's opinions, the 2008 bankruptcy of Caesars Entertainment. They did a leveraged buyout. That's what this is called, a leveraged buyout. TPG Capital, the majority of the buyers, as well as Fosun Capital, a Chinese company, and a company that I cannot pronounce. It's actually the Quebec Pension Fund, we'll just call it that. Actually comes out to La Caisse 
des dépôts et placements du Québec. I said that horribly. I'm sorry, my French friends from both sides of the Atlantic and up in Quebec and also over in France. Uh, yeah, they with the, the Quebec Pension Fund. They all chipped in and they gave not they gave 1.5 billion dollars to Cirque du Soleil, and they also did in a leverage buyout something that's quite common. They then turned around and gave Cirque du Soleil 900 million dollars worth of debt. And in a leveraged buyout, and I'm not a financial analyst, so let me know nicely if I got this mostly right. Uh, what's happening in a leveraged buyout is somebody like TPG Capital, Fosun Capital, and the Quebec Pension Fund. I'm just going to say it in English. You'll have to deal with that. They get together and they use the assets of a company to generate income for themselves. So they go to the banks and they say, we need $1.5 billion dollars and we have Cirque du Soleil and we're going to use that as an asset to get the, the loan that you, we're going to give to Cirque du Soleil. And then we're going to give them a bunch of debt and then we're going to hope that they can make that money back, pay their debt payments off and keep operating. And now that Cirque du Soleil has a bunch of money, they can grow their shows but they also have a bunch of debt. And that's where the problem really started for Cirque du Soleil. You know, the, the, the writing was on the wall for Cirque du Soleil for a long time. They started putting more productions in more places, putting productions in Broadway, putting productions that were resident shows on Broadway. There was one called The Magician, I believe it was called. Uh, rumor has it it was coming to Las Vegas to possibly be over at Phil Ruffin's place at Circus Circus after he purchased it. Now, obviously, none of that's happening. Uh, more shows in more places, trying to grow a digital platform all the time running on nothing but their ticket sales. So obviously when the C-19 virus hit and they had no ticket sales, they had no operating income, and they had a bunch of debt payments from that leveraged buyout that they accepted. They own 10% of their company, but you own 10% of nothing when you have no product to put forth. So with that, Cirque du Soleil started laying people off, and they've currently gone into bankruptcy again. They got into bankruptcy, went to the courts, asked the Canadian court if they could file a Chapter 15, which means that they can bring it to the United States. They were granted protections, took $300 million of extra capital from those same three parties that I just talked about, TPG Capital, Fosun, and the Quebec Pension Fund, and now they are trying their best to restructure with some capital so they can get the show on the road. So that, I haven't explained it, it's seven minutes into the video. Why did they close Zumanity? Well, I think the answer to that is quite simple, okay? Zumanity and one other show in Las Vegas are shows that could be easily closed and have their theaters reused as something else. Um, Zumanity being one of those shows, I remember watching it on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno a long time ago, and Jay Leno would have at the very end a musical guest. In this case, he had Zumanity by Cirque du Soleil. Everybody kept their clothes on, of course. Um, they had that show on the Tonight Show set. They could show some cool acrobatics, but that was because the show wasn't unique enough to need its own theater, and that's one reason why you can close a show like Cirque du Soleil, Zule, Cirque du Soleil's Humanity. It's a tongue twister if you say it enough over the course of eight or nine minutes. Um, uh, uh, pursuant to that, Cirque du Soleil is in a position right now where they have to shed things that aren't being profitable for them, and Zumanity is a show along with all their other shows, that's not profitable for them right now. But it's a show that going forward can be closed. Can be closed is important. Because there's other shows that cannot really be closed in Las Vegas or make no sense to close. For example, across the street you have Ka by Cirque du Soleil. Ka by Cirque du Soleil has got a $165 million custom-built stage. It would be very difficult to repurpose that theater for anything. So Ka by Cirque du Soleil, I expect, will actually stay in Las Vegas. Across the other side at Mandalay Bay, we have the Michael Jackson's MJ1 show, obviously with millions of dollars of licensed music in the show. Count on MJ1 being a show that stays, as well as you have, of course, at the Bellagio, the O Show. O Show, again, a giant custom stage in a custom spot. What are they gonna do with that? Spend millions of dollars to repurpose the space in the casino, or just work through it with Cirque du Soleil and hopefully everything is okay in a year or two. Uh, you also have that the Mirage, the Beatles love, that's another licensed music show. Lots of money tied up in the licensing agreements, big brand names, global brand names with the Beatles and Michael Jackson, as we mentioned. I suspect that show stays, but that unfortunately brings us to the next one up the street and that would be Mystere at the Treasure Island. Now Mystere at the Treasure Island is just like Cirque du Soleil's uh, humanity. It's in a theater space, which is not profitable, but it's not set and saddled with licensing agreements or custom giant stages. It's a place where Phil Ruffin could easily take the show, move it out of the actual property, and not miss a beat. 
He's already done this once with the buffet. He doesn't have a buffet at Treasure Island anymore, but don't you know they have the nicest William Hill sports book that you've ever seen? A profitable space for casino owners. And Phil Ruffin, from what I've heard, is the kind of guy that looks at his books before he looks at the nostalgia member berries that we all have of seeing the show in the past. So my suspicion is that Mystere will also be off the books in time. I hope that I'm incorrect on that, and I may just well be wrong. But if I'm not wrong, you heard it here first. I expect that Mystere might be one that they're looking at getting rid of. So where do we go from here? That's the question. Um, there's not much place to go except for a wait and see approach. We're not going to be seeing much right now in terms of shows going forward with Cirque, especially with the surge that we're in. Right now, the Southern Nevada Health District, as of this last week, the week of uh, the week of November 16th, has recommended that sh uh, indoor gatherings be limited to 50. They're not mandating that shows can't perform for right now. Would they have a 250 person capacity unless they're in a very large venue like Jabberwockies? But that's something that could change in a few days on Tuesday when Nevada Governor Steve Sisolak announces new restrictions, which we have no idea what they're going to be. For all we know, shows are off the table for a few weeks and everybody's back to swear one. Or for all we know, everything in my local neighborhood is closed, creating a bubble of sorts around the resorts where people can work at the resorts, not go to their local bar or their local restaurant and spread it. It's gonna be an interesting wild, wild wild ride. So I hope that you would actually subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for all the notifications, and we can talk about that more down the line. But it's an interesting tale, isn't it? I've tried my best to explain it. I don't have any kind of financial degrees. Hopefully I didn't butcher it that much for you. If you guys were watching this, getting irritated because you have a very good education, be nice in the comments below and educate us all as to what I was wrong with and what is the right way of saying it. But for right now, my name is Steven and I am not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. I hope you would do those things. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. Also support us over on Patreon, channel memberships, or VegasFaceMask.com. Look, hey, you know what? Most states are going to masks. Yeah, even states you never thought would go to masks are going to masks. If you need a pair, they're two for 25 and free shipping. We also ship out to Canada, the United Kingdom. I sent one to Denmark. Holy cow, we got a lot of masks going out around the world. Just pay the extra shipping. That helps the fam and the wife makes them custom for you. And that's it. So here's the time of the video where I say three, two, one click. I hope you guys enjoyed. Oh, I almost did it perfect. And then I banged my camera. What a goof. All right, three, two, one, click. I'm not re-recording it, sorry. Three, two, one, thanks for watching, of course, and click.